Sky News Australia primetime host Peter Credlin also fell victim to the RMIT fact checkers after she dared to expose the true scale of the Uluru Statement. The Uluru Statement from the Heart is not a one page document. It's actually 26 pages in all. And we only know that because the government's been forced to release the full document under Freedom of Information, FOI. And it's the whole 26 pages of the Uluru Statement from the Heart that every Australian should read, not the PM's sanitised one-pager, before they cast their vote in the upcoming referendum. Credlin was slapped with a false information label, but she fought back and she won. Labor is not just trying to change our constitution. It also wants to introduce so-called misinformation legislation, which will embolden the fact-checking industry. Uh, misinformation. 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 The misinformation which is there. Some misinformation. Spread. Um, misinformation. If social media giants do not have a fact-checking system, which in this case favours Labor's policies, they could be fined billions of dollars. I mean, people are pretty cynical about inquiries, but they are a very effective mechanism of, of drawing these things out into the light. I think we, we certainly need an inquiry about the role of big tech uh, into our democracy. I pushed for that two and a half years ago. It was shot down on the Senate floor, unfortunately. We need to do that again. But I think we also need an inquiry in relation to the financial arrangements between social media companies broadly, uh, fact checkers and uh, indeed our academic institutions like universities. Um, I think a lot of the problem here is that this is going unnoticed. Uh, people have historically put a lot of faith in experts in academia, in you know their government regulatory departments uh, like we've named uh, and all of that is probably true for 90 percent of the time but the ability for experts to dictate uh, terms over what happens in our society now has reached critical mass and there has to be uh, some inquiries and they have to be fleshed out into the public domain and we need media organisations to start reporting the entire facts, not just the facts that suit their political narrative, but the facts as journalists used to. And this is why the independent journalist space has become so important and I think is under threat from this terrible Labor ACMA bill. Well, if you think this problem is bad now, just wait until Labor's misinformation or disinformation laws pass. It will put a rocket under the fact-checking industry and you will have people coming out of the woodwork to appoint themselves as fact-checkers and to get access to the money from these platforms to perform this service. Because as the platforms themselves have said, including before my own Senate committee, if they are fearing the consequences of fines and potentially in extreme circumstances, even jail time for their executives, if they permit there to be misinformation on their platforms, well, they're going to be engaging in massive preemptive censorship in order to protect themselves. And the only way they've found to do that so far is to engage these so-called independent fact checkers to do so. So we're going to see uh, posts being taken down left, right and centre. We're going to see things being labelled misinformation across the board because these platforms don't want to face the legal penalties that would be in Labor's laws. I mean, this is exactly why Labor should abandon this wrong-headed approach to misinformation. They should uh, bin the bill that they've put out there. Really, it is a friendless bill. No one from the Human Rights Commission, the Media Entertainment Arts Alliance, uh, the platforms themselves, or media companies, support the bill in its current form, and I think it has to go. Government funded, which means taxpayer funded entities like the ABC, our national broadcaster, like our universities, should be held to the very highest standards when it comes to presenting both sides of an argument, when it comes to intellectual rigour, when it comes to academic rigour. As we have seen through this outrageous fact-checking fact operation that has been run through the ABC and the RMIT University, our taxpayer dollars are funding censorship this is utterly outrageous. Every single taxpayer in Australia should be demanding our money back because we are not seeing organisations operating with rigorous editorial standards. I have spoken about this so many times. The ABC are required to present both sides 
of an argument, especially on issues that have potentially huge ramifications for the manner in which our nation operates. And similarly, universities who receive hundreds and hundreds of millions of taxpayers' dollars each and every year should be making sure that if they want to enter into a debate, as the RMIT has done, as a fact-checking unit, that they are examining both sides of the stories. I mean, bizarrely, that's precisely what a fact-checking organisation should do. But in, when it comes to the censorship of me, when it comes to the censorship of Peter Credlin, they are completely unwilling to consider both sides of the story. I think it comes back to the point where who is defining what misinformation is? Misinformation is, and have we just lost the ability to debate? Sort of two questions there. I mean, what started to happen is that with growing intolerance of other people's views, you see particular political activists labeling disagreements, misinformation, uh, opinions about whether that's a good piece of legislation, where people, where fair-minded people can have a different point of view, they will, people will label that misinformation. So it's a real abuse of that term in particular. But I also think that, look, free speech, whether in the United States or in Australia, or whether it's what's in, what's, uh, in the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, it says that we're not actually going to only protect free speech for things that we agree with or with things that we consider to be accurate. Free speech is everybody's right. There's only a very small number of cases where governments in free societies restrict what people are able to say. It's fraud, incitement to violence, uh, you know, child exploitation. Uh, those are very limited things, but really much more broadly. And by the way, the incitement to violence has to be immediate. It can't be vague, uh, prejudicial or racist statements. Those are all things that society must allow. In fact, we we have an instrumental reason for that. We think it's better for people that to overcome their prejudices and hatred by being able to talk about them. To, if there's people have bad ideas, we think it's better to talk about those ideas rather than to censor and repress them for it. But we also think that it's a fundamental human right to be able to share your views and to have access to information, whatever, it, whether it's accurate or inaccurate. Uh, this is what it means to live in a free society. Uh, this debate was had, I should point out, really 300 years ago in Europe, we decided that we the, pu the public really wanted free speech. We did not want the government deciding what was true or false, because obviously politicians have a big incentive to lie and to censor their political opponents. And so I do think that uh, we need to remind people that these freedoms that we've taken for granted are really under threat. And those include the right to disagree, to be disagreeable, and even to offend people. That's absolutely a protected right and one that we should demand be protected. We asked Labor's communication minister, Michelle Rowland, to join us on camera for an interview about these laws, but we never heard back. Sky News has contacted RMIT about these allegations multiple times, and the university stands by its fact checks despite the suspension. Meta wanted to make it clear they did not endorse RMIT unduly targeting one side of the debate, and the ABC did not respond to a request for comment. While Sky News had a victory in our battle for the free press, the industrial censorship complex is still alive and well. These fact checkers have only been suspended despite the pages of damning evidence we uncovered, meaning they could be back censoring debates in no time. Meta's global fact checking program is still in full force and the use of foreign funds to impact our political debates should disturb every Australian. This money is flowing through to nearly every major democracy in the world. But today at least, journalism and free speech has won. It shows that your opinions and ideas are valid. And as Australians, we must continue to have the tough debates.